Hello, today we'll take a look at the Syncavia region and how to uh, use samples in interesting ways with the Syncavia region. It's, it is, of course, an evolution of the original Syncavia 2 system uh, with some added new features, of course. But first, let's play some sounds. I made most of these myself, but there, some of them are sort of modifications of, um, of uh, other, other timbres from the onboard library and from downloaded library. So first, I actually did a modification of this patch called Many Strings that is in the present library. If you look at the sort of part view, you can see that's a lot of different samples loaded on top of each other here. Um, and we can play around with the FM on a timbre level, meaning that we, we change the FM on all the different uh, different sort of partials here, all the different samples in this case. This is the original sound with no FM at all. So let's add FM. When I say add FM, I mean that we're actually FM modulating the samples here, which is also something that is not very common in most synthesizers and samplers, even advanced ones. Let's look at some other user patches from myself and modifications of others, timbre. Right, let's see here. Some of these are made by, by sort of stacking samples on top of each other. Some are made by using uh, resynthesis. Some are basically FM sounds. That's uh, additive frames moving around, probably based on resynthesis if I remember correctly. samples on top of each other with FM. The range as you can have with FM on this synthesizer is a lot more than you do on, for instance, in the DX7, more extreme settings as, as possible. This is a sample being modified, to, modified by frames using uh, different levels of FM as it sort of um, travels here. Here I'm using the many strings patch um, above, or timbre above, but using a higher uh, FM ratio. Here we are. Sounds using frames. And these can be very easily modified. interesting things here. Um, let's go into another user library. These are some samples, some sorry, some timbres that I made on the Arturia Synclavier V and also some presses that were that were in that library and some downloaded sounds. Uh, let's see here. This one perhaps. Might be recognizable to some. 
let's increase the preset uh, or the master reverb. Hope we don't get the copyright <laughs> issue with that one. As you notice, you can really layer sounds in an interesting way on this one. sounds different. Some more sounds and then I will show you some things. Let's remove the reverb. It's probably not exactly like that, but I think you recognize that. This is a modification of a really interesting sound I found in a library which is using the frames to create an interesting rhythm. Yeah. Then we have some uh, sounds here. Some sounds made with the synthesis here. Okay, so now let's do something from scratch instead. We will um, remove current track here and we will create a new timbre. Whoops, sorry, not FM. <laughs> we have to be in carry mode. Increase the volume. Now we just have a sign. Just the fundamental. So let's load the sample into this one. Go to wave and we go to samples. We can do it in a different way. I like to press the sample button and then we can audition samples here that are in this particular library. This is the library from the Sinclair V actually. It's a lot of different things like this. I like that, let's load that. Choose partial, it loads uh, automatically to uh, partial one if you don't choose partial. Right, and then let's add something on top of that. So we can actually remain here in the sample library browser here. A lot of different things like this. Let's go to the Preset library and I will show some sounds are actually in the um, Sinclair region as it ships. There's a lot of, lot of in interesting textures here also as well. Let's see here. I like that. Now I have to choose partial, partial 2 and load. Interesting. Let's see if we can perhaps load uh, more how you say normal sounds on top of that uh, what is this yeah choose partial now we choose partial free now we load it then we can go into um, 
wave here. Let's let's change that. Let's uh, go down in semitone. Look at the levels. Increase the level a bit. And in order to increase the um, this is the part here mode, increase the envelope release, we can select all the partials and increase the release. I think I want some kind of interesting attack on this as well, so let, let's go back to um, I could actually go to the sample library straight away if I want to. Uh, let's see if we have some interesting attack here. Yeah. This can actually be these metal percussion actually downloaded from, from the nut. Something like that. Though. Yeah, let's use that. Choose partial, and remember, we have to use partial four then, since that is the one not occupied. And we, I think we want to pitch this one a bit lower. We also want to make sure that the, um, the release on that sample is Do something interesting with FM. Uh, let's go to the first sample. We can solo that. We can make it more interesting by adding FM to it. So I'm going to go to the modulator and levels. Let's say it quite select what high FM rates you here and add FM. In order for for that to actually follow the sound, we also need to change the FM. Oops, this is the first one selected, the FM uh, modulator envelope release, like so. Nice. And then we, let's take a look at the different sample. Let's add some FM to that as well. I can also add FM to all samples at the same, all parts at the same time as I showed you before, but... Okay, so let's listen to this. Oh, I have to um, also change the modulator release to that. So if we took, take these two samples together, the other ones. to get lost in sound design on this in Clearview. It makes a really complex sound. Let's uh, focus on some of these now. Um, these parts I made here. We might as well select um, these and lower them. Carrier volume. Let's select one. We can listen to the other one. Adds in some of that. And some of that. Then we want to check out this one. I want to have this the loudest. And then we have the attack. Even louder. Now we 
we're gonna do something with frames here. Okay, so look. And this one. Let's increase the volume just to hear it. Let's take a look at the, these frames. Uh, oh, we haven't added yet to this one. So let's clone frames. Now we have some frames here. But they are set to the fundamental. So what I want to do is I want to add to edit these. Uh, so frame one, edit harmonics. I want to remove this. Otherwise it will not show, play the sample for that frame. So I'm going to do this for all of the frames, edit harmonics. And uh, we have, still have the, the sample that's on top of that's okay. So let's do uh, this one still have that one, harmonics. the frames yeah and then you can only edit for these five frames since this first one has the sample now we want to um, change some things as the frames go across so speak so we want to go into frame one that's the first frame where there's where, where that we can change um, and we want to change the fm let's start with no fm on this one Frame, the FM comes in first on the second frame. Uh, so then we have the frame select, and then the second frame. Let's lower that to it. Bit. Yeah, that's just an example on things we can do. And you notice that there's a certain sound character here in this machine. I always end up doing these complex layers with frames and uh, and so forth. And it's very very interesting, I think, because it it, go, it you you don't use it in the same way as you do any other, um, be it a subtractive synthesizer or, for instance, my Waldorf M wavetable synth. You you use this in a very different manner, and it's always almost becoming intuitive to me. And even though I sometimes make a mistake, I, I I do know how to how to use it quickly, and I I know what what uh, what I want to do and and how to do it. Um, sometimes I just become you know. Uh, very excited and uh, walk around, but it's still less confusing to me now than, for instance, the Wall of M with all the the knobs. This is a much nicer interface for me to work with. And also, you don't see it in in the picture, but I have a Arturia Mini Lab Free here, where I actually have some um, some mapping, so I can change, for instance, FM overall FM. So if I just grab the overall FM here. I've changed it for all the different uh, parts. Okay, so I think we're at a good place to uh, end this first video. I will make some more videos showing different sound and sound uh, synthesis techniques on the Seclavier. Uh, not least of all, resynthesis, which I think is very interesting. And that's it from me for today. Thank you very much. Goodbye.